Exercise 7, SOLIDWORKS 2016. In this exercise, we're gonna, our goal is to build what you see up on the screen. It's essentially like a grill that you would have over a muffin fan. And though it doesn't seem all that complex, the feet pads were basically they would be screwed or the fasteners would uh, screw down uh, this, these wires is rather complex. It's actually 3D curve that we're going to generate. So, and at the same token, I'll show a few tips and tricks on how to make this very efficiently. Also, at the end, we'll take a look at some of the labs. So, let's begin at the very start here. We're going to go ahead and just draw one of the foot pads first. And you can see here it's a combination of two sketches a front and a right side view. So start off with a new part file. And select the front plane and start a sketch. Take the line tool and at the origin snap to it and draw out a short line about an inch and a half in height. Make sure it's vertical and then hit escape. Now we'll go ahead and go to the arc tools hit the little arrow to the right of it and find center point arc. With center point arc move your pointer directly above and in alignment with the line you just drew. When you get the inference click and connect it to the vertex of the line that was drawn earlier. Click again once you connect and then move your pointer counterclockwise. So I'm moving from the 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock to 12 o'clock and in this case, actually, you want to get to right about, so what would that be, uh, 7 o'clock-ish, okay? And in other words, A is equal to about 320-something 20 degrees, approximately there. Click, and that leaves a little opening. Now go ahead and hit Escape a couple times on your keyboard and hit the F key to fit it. We want to snap this point in alignment vertical to this. So go ahead and select this line and hold control and select the center point. And on the left, go ahead and make it coincident. It looks as it, at that line as if it's infinite. Now it's, it's not gonna move left or right. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Smart Dimension tool and add some dimensions here. So if you click on this endpoint here to the arc, drag out the dimension, and if we look at our book, it's supposed to be four inches. All right, the next dimension we're going to add is the one and a half inch radius. So that's just on the arc, 1.5. And then go ahead and we're going to, um, now we want to add a dimension for the opening. And here's a little trick. Go ahead and select the end point of the opening there and the end point over here. And then click on the center point of the arc drag between the two, click to drop it, and we need to uh, specify 15 degrees for that. So go ahead and type in 15 and hit enter. Make sure it's in the it's centered in between there. Okay, now we could add our sketched fillet. So go to the sketch fillet tool, and let's set it to one inch, and select this intersection, and hit the green check. Now go ahead and to exit the sketch, you could either hit exit sketch on the left or hit rebuild. Either one is fine. If you rotate this around, you can see it's just flat and planar. So that's the looking at this little foot pad from the top, or in this case the front. Let's go ahead and select the right plane now and start a sketch and draw the right profile. And so I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to go to the right view and take your line tool and glide up to the very bottom here to the origin when you get the orange dot click drag it up about an inch and a half make sure it's on the line click drag at an angle about an inch don't worry too much about the angle just yet and then just drag up a line about three and a half inches and then hit escape go to the smart dimension tool and the first couple of dimensions we need to add here we're looking at the book here we have a 2.0 TSC the TSC and when I put that in there that indicates a theoretical sharp corner 
So go ahead and select this corner and then move your pointer away and hit your right arrow key on your keyboard one time. That will expose the center point of the arc that we want to attach it to. So click and then drag this over to the left, click to drop it, type in 2 and hit enter. While that's still active over here, if you wanted um, for later use, you could type in TSC or it's not necessary. Hit the left arrow key one time to have it rotate back in position or space bar, hit, select the right view orientation. Let's go back to smart dimension and the next dimension we'll add is this three inch. So we'll click on this. That's going to be three. And then let's go ahead and add the angle of 130 degrees. So click on this line here to this angle and right there 130. And then click on this line and drag it straight up and just somewhere in the middle here click and make that one inch. Now we could go ahead and add the one inch radiuses. So go to the sketch fillet and it should remember from last time just click on the two intersections and hit the green check. Alright, as we rotate this you can see now we have two separate sketches. Hit the rebuild button and the goal here is we want to combine those two, the attributes of both. Imagine it almost like this one down here is a right side profile of a tool, like a die. And we want to bend this curve onto it. And that's what we're going to do. We just go to insert, curve, and project it. And you'll notice your sketch on the face. So you could do it where you actually make the tool and then have it bend it on there or just go to sketch on a sketch. Now it's not technically not bending, it's just adopting the attributes of both. So go ahead and select both of these curves and you'll see a, a preview in yellow up here. Hit the green check mark and then click off of it. And now you can see we have our 3D guide curve. Go ahead and select the top plane and start a sketch. Take the circle tool and at the origin, make sure you get the orange dot, click and drag out a circle. Let's dimension that at 0.5. Now go ahead and hit rebuild. It's important to exit out of the sketch before you can sweep. So now you could go to sweat boss base select the circle for the profile and then the blue curve for the path and you could hit uh, you could right click okay and so we have here our uh, our profile or I, I should say our model we could hide the curves if we hit this little arrow right click on the curve and oh, it is actually turned off actually uh, oh, I'm sorry, right here, right click and hide. So we don't need to see that. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we're going to draw the extension of this. Now we could have drawn the extension to begin with. I've just learned over the years of teaching this that sometimes it's better to take it in small chunks uh, for students' sake. But if you're a more advanced user, by all means, you could have done this all in one shot. So now I'm going to go ahead and select the front plane start a sketch. And I'm going to go normal 2. Oops, I'm going to actually uh, just click on front. And now I'm going to take my line tool and at that origin I'm going to click and drag a 7 inch line down. And now you could actually just move your pointer out. And here's a, Instead of going to tangent arc, which you could do, you could go to the tangent arc icon and activate it, or you could just do this, go back and tag where you started, drag it straight down and to the left. Now I didn't click, I just went ahead and I tagged back where I started. And so it leaves a little hook here. And the A should be less than 90 degrees on this one. And the radius is going to be about an inch, so click. And you'll see where I'm going with this in just a minute here. So go to smart dimension, add your 7 inch dimension for the length of the line, add a one inch radius 
And now we'll repeat the steps where we made that opening here. Same thing, just click on the two ends of the arc and then the center point of the arc and drag this out to the lower right. And that's gonna be 45 degrees. Now I'm gonna hit rebuild to exit the sketch. And I could go ahead and select this face here and start a sketch. So don't miss that step. You have to start a sketch on this face. While that face is selected, or if you select the edge, either one, go to Convert Entities. Convert Entities is a great tool. It projects the edges off of any geometry that you have on the screen, virtually any geometry. And so now we could hit Rebuild and go to Swept Boss Base. Go ahead and click on the New Profile and then select the Path and you'll see it will continue on. Hit the green check. And again, you could have done this all in one shot if you wanted. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mirror across that face. Since we had it at 45 degrees, when we mirror it across, we'll have a full 90 elbow. So let's go to the mirror tool and faces to mirror across. Just go ahead and select this little end face and click in the bodies to mirror. Use the bodies to mirror for this one and click. You won't see a very decent good preview because remember it's all radial edges so they don't show up as you might expect in the preview so don't worry just hit the green check and it should turn out should turn out with a 90 degree elbow. Now let's go ahead and select the right plane and start a sketch because we're going to put in the concentric rings. Now zoom up to the very bottom here there's a couple things we need to do. Go ahead and it's a good idea at this point to change it to wireframe temporarily. Now again, I'm zoomed up at the bottom here. I'm just going to hit escape. And I want to capture this edge here so I could snap a center line to it because we need a center line to locate the center of the entire model once it's completed. Um, and thus to complete it, we need the center line. So click on the Solero, find the center line tool move over to this edge. When it wakes up that center point, move to the center point, click, and drag a horizontal center line across, about an inch and a half. As long as it's horizontal, you're in good shape. If it's blue, delete it and try that again because you, must have, you might have missed that center point. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, uh, actually you could just stay zoomed up here. Take another circle and over here, click and drag out a circle and don't touch the edges. Don't touch the edges, just dra draw it in between these two entities here. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape and we want it to match the same thickness of the wire we used for the rest of the model. So go ahead and select this edge and then hold control and select this circle and make them equal. That way they're, it's good, they're both going to be half inch. So if we change the entire wire specification, everything changes. Which might not be what you want necessarily, but in this case I do want that. Okay, go to Smart Dimension. Now we're going to go ahead and click on this and then click on this edge here and just make that 0.23. And the reason why I'm making a 0.23 is so it digs in a little bit. Be aware, if you made a tangent to where it was floating just on the edge, you might get a little error message. And you, you, The way to override that, you would actually just make it a separate um, volume. So you would, when you revolve this, you would deactivate the little merge option. But uh, we actually want it to merge like it's welded a little bit together, okay? And so the next one, go ahead and click on this circle and dimension it to the center line. And this needs to be one and a half inches. And now it should be fully defined. Hit escape. Next thing is we're gonna take a look at the linear sketch patterns. The first thing you wanna do is select what you want to pattern, in this case, the circle. Next step is go to the linear sketch pattern option up here. And what we're going to do, you can see immediately it's moving horizontal. We don't want that. We actually, uh, what you do is just set this little switch, bump it down to 1. But we do want direction 2, bump that up to 4. 
and then the spacing is going to be two and a half inches and hit enter and then zoom out just to make sure it looks correct now before you hit enter um, go ahead and select dimension Y spacing that will add a dimension in and thus we're going to have it um, almost nearly fully defined with the exception of one thing we need to define hit escape just click on this line the center line that it's generated and go ahead and make it vertical and then it's fully defined all right now we are ready to go ahead and revolve so what we want to do is we want to capture a 180 degrees or one half of the grill and then mirror it over so what we can do is let's go back to shaded mode and I'm just going to go ahead and revolve this. So I'm going to go to Features, Revolve, and we're going to have to select that center line right there. Notice what that did. That center line center point was locked in to the intersection, essentially, the center of the wire, thus making a center for us that we could revolve around. Now, we don't want it to go full 360 degrees. We actually want it to go to, um, instead, make it 45, and then have direction 2 of 135, which, if you add the two together, makes 180 degrees. However, its current status is not usable. It's not feasible. So you want to hit this reverse direction switch. Now we get exactly one half of our entire model hit the green check and see what I mean by efficient look at the feature tree minimal sweeps could have actually even reduced that but now let's go to the mirror the mirror face or plane would be this one any one of these little end faces and then just make sure um, let's clear that selection we don't want features to mirror we want bodies to mirror take everything click on the body again the preview isn't exactly what uh, very helpful go ahead and hit the enter button and now you should have your exercise 7 part complete so what we saw there were a couple tips and tricks but really this 3d combination of two sketches is very useful at times now there is a 3d sketch tool be aware and that's what I'm going to take a look at next start a new part file and you don't have to select the planes instead go to the sketch and hit the little arrow underneath the sketch tool and you'll find 3d sketch there you see the origin and you have an array of tools some you're not able to use all of them that you might be familiar with with the 2d sketches but that's okay go to the line tool here and line yourself in the center there once it snaps click and drag it vertical and you we're going to drag this up two inches so get it as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get the, the feedback, like 1.96. That's fine. Click. Now, um, we're making a chair, if you've ever seen those wire chairs, essentially. And I'm going to go across. Again, everything is just going to be two inches, just to keep it simple in this exercise. Click. And I'm making the back of the chair. Now, down here, we could infer to this without clicking. Oops. Let's get that. And I'm not inferring too well there. That's okay. I'm just going to about two inches click. Now I want it to go forward. The tab key on your keyboard does this. Hit it one time, and now it goes in the YZ direction. Again, go about two inches. Click. Now here's the thing. Always make sure sometimes you have to rotate to see the perspective properly. In this case, we want to go down, which is fine, YZ. And again, two inches. Click. And then we could go back, YZ. And again, two inches approximately. Click. All right. So now we have one half of our leg. We want to go across here two inches. Oops. Okay. So notice we're in the YZ, though. Yeah, hit the tab key again and now we could go two inches across here just one hit of the tab key does it and now we want to go 
forward and just make sure it's going forward this time, which it is, two inches. And now you want to drag it up, so you have to hit the tab key again. Approximately two inches. And then connect it to the end. Hit escape. And there you have like a wire chair there. And you could use it for sweeps or whatever you're going to do. Notice there's the other tools up here. There's You could put fillets and radiuses on, so you could adjust that. Let's see. Let's go ahead and put a 0.5 on a couple of these here. Okay. And if you wanted to sweep, um, what you could do is um, I'm going to hit rebuild and I'm going to control select that line in this endpoint. And I'm going to go to the features and reference geometry to create a plane. Or you could go right to sketch and it will automatically generate a plane if you select that, that edge. Okay, what this does, it creates a plane perpendicular to that. And now let's go to the sketch. Let's start a sketch on that. Click on the edge of the plane. Go to sketch. Let's take a circle and just right on there, just put a small circle. Let's hit rebuild. And now let's try and sweep it. I've not done this one before, but let's give it a shot. And there we go. Now you have your tubular frame wire or tubular frame chair. You can hide that. All right, moving along. So that's the 3D sketch. So just don't remember under there, 3D sketch. And the tab key is the key to use to transition between X, Y, and Z. So, okay, let's take a look at the manual. The next lab here is the smoke detector, the smoke detector cover that you see here. So it's a small one, it's two and a half inches, and it's about a thickness of two, 0.25 has a chamfer of uh, 0.1. So let's go ahead and start that new part. Select the front plane. Uh, in this case, actually, I'll do it on the top. Start on the top plane. And I'm going to draw my circle two and a half inches. Now remember, these ones, I, my students especially, I really recommend that they Try them on your own before you watch my video. Like at this point, pause it, minimize it, give it a shot on your own because these, that's where you're going to learn the most. If you go ahead and just watch the videos each time, you're not going to learn as, as much as you would had you tried it first on your own and then go back and look at how I did it and you might have found a different method than I used and you're just going to expand your knowledge that way. So just some thoughts there. Okay, now I'm going to extrude this, and it gets extruded 0.25. Now I'm going to go to the chamfer tool, and it's a 0.1 right on this edge. Hit apply. Now I'm going to select this face and start my sketch, and I'm going to go to the top view orientation. And we have to position this centered, and it's a... Um, 0.75 diameter boss that uh, extends a height here of um, 0.1. So I'm going to go to the circle tool and align myself right about there. Draw this out. Dimension it at 0.75. And right now it's kind of floating there so if you just select the center and select this origin holding control and just make it vertical okay. now let's position it dimension it to the center and yeah, look at the manual for that one it's point six two five all right extrude that point one And go ahead, we're going to make um, the fillet on the top there. 
and the fillet, according to the print, is 0 0.09. Just select this face and hit apply. Now we're ready to shell it out. So rotate it around the back, go to the shell command. Let's just verify what the typical wall thickness is on this. And it is 50 thousandths. So 0 0.05. Select the back face and hit apply. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put those cutouts in here. Select this face, start a sketch. And let's go normal too. So we have a cutout here, and it's uh, specified actually to the right, 50 thousandths in height, and the depth is 0.1 tangent to the outside edge of that. So for that, we could actually do it right here on the side. I'm going to use a center rectangle. We'll infer to the center here, right about there, and let's put the dimensions on it. So it's going to be 0 0.1 by 0 0.05. And now we could select this face and make it tangent, I should say that edge, to this edge. And we'll find tangency holding control to that. And now I'll go ahead and select this, and we'll center it. Um, actually, I wanted to infer to the center there. Let's see. We could just go ahead and draw a center line off there. Oops, I accidentally picked the wrong thing there. Okay, I'm in the center line. All right. Could wake this up and just snap it to it so it's centered. All right, now we just go to features, extrude cut, and we'll select up to surface. And go ahead and select the surface. And that makes our cutout. And in fact, actually, if you wanted to, you could edit that sketch just by right clicking over here go to edit sketch and in the center there let's draw in that circle because that's a cutout as well I've neglected to put that in there so 0.125 through Oops. and now we can hit rebuild All right now we'll just pattern that. Select this face, go to circular pattern. You could select this edge. Oops, let's go to uh, parameters here. Select that little box and then select this edge. And then put in the specified amount. Let's see, I believe there's just eight on there. Yeah. Hit the green check. Okay, now the cutouts here. Select this face, start a sketch, go normal two, and draw a rectangle. You can have it extending out like that, that's fine. Okay, and this rectangle needs to be 0.2 and 0.95 and see 0.25 off center so let's go to smart dimension select this to the origin 0.25 and then we could select this center to this center and make it horizontal and go back to smart dimension and let's dimension that line there and that's supposed to be Point two. Okay, I actually get a point nine five. You could put that in if you like. For the length, or just go with one inch because it really doesn't matter as long as it extends beyond the boundary here. 
Okay, now I'm going to go to Features, Extrude Cut, and the depth is specified on there as well. When you see the DP, that's the depth, so 60 thousandths. So 0 0.06. And there's our cutout. Now we want to pattern it, and the offset is set to... Oh, actually, it's supposed to be a 0.15 wide, and then 0.2 is the offset. So that's an easy fix. Just double click here, double click on this, 0.15, and rebuild. And now select that face, go to the linear pattern, select this edge. Oh, actually, uh, for direction, actually, clear that. I didn't want that as a direction. But we want that as a feature, so click in Features and select that now. And then we just set it to 0.2 for the distance spacing and just bump, uh, reduce it to four instances. Hit the green check and notice it automatically creates that feature that you have there. Okay, now the embossed text. Select this face, start a sketch, go Normal 2 and we're going to go ahead and put in some text. Just going to type in here um, let's go with Castello. Uh, you can put whatever you want, put your name on it. This is just a fictional company name. I'm going to go to font. I turned off use document file. I'm going to font here. I'm going to select something a little bit more elegant or interesting perhaps. Yeah, that one looks good. It's not very elegant, but it looks okay. All right, and we'll keep it at 0.125. Hit OK and just locate that. Now the thing is you want to make sure, oh, look at that. If you zoom up, if you see things like this, that's not good. All those double entities. That's going to fail for sure. So go to font and select something else. Let's try this one. Okay. And hit the green check mark. Go to features. Position. You could drag this to relocate the position. I'm just going to go extrude it. In this case you want it embossed. And we just wanted a very minimal height, so 0 0.02. And then that other little design, we could select this face, start a sketch, and go normal 2. And all I did for that, the ellipse tool was used, and I just find the, try and find something that looks like the center create one ellipse and create a second one underneath it a little bit smaller and it gets thinner around this area here and I go to features extrude boss and this one's only 0.01 so it's not even as high as the text and if you like you could paint it select the face and go to the boss extrude and let's make that um, make that green and that completes that lab that completes exercise 7